everyone. We got John Humphrey here today with linkster.com. And I'm going to make sure to have this link in the show notes, but you should head over to L I N X S T R.com slash training to get an idea of what him and his team are doing, because we're talking about IOT devices and your rental properties and making property management a little easier. Right, John? That's it. That's exactly uh, what we're all about. Great, great to be here, Jack. So um, let's start things off. I like I pointed pointed out the fact that George George Salas was on the uh, podcast at one point and for his short term rentals. So you can hold, hold, head over to reimastermind.net. Check out episode number two hundred and sixty, where we talked to George about that. But why don't we start the process here? Let's talk about these IoT devices. And what got you guys started in this? Yeah, great, great question, Jack. So, you know, we all, uh, you know, my background and my partner, uh, Jerry Conti, we have, uh, we've had a short-term vacation rental business, teaching people how to create really big luxury homes. Like we did that since 2018 and we were cranking along. We had properties, we had, you know, multi-million dollars worth of real estate act actually out in Phoenix, Scottsdale area. And back when you know, the pandemic hit, right? March came around. And uh, if you were somebody in the short-term vacation rental industry, you really panicked because everybody started canceling. Now, what most people don't know in the industry is that if you were a traveler back then, you probably got a notification from Airbnb that said, hey, listen, if you want to cancel your trip, then you can go ahead and do it. And don't worry about your cancellation policy that you have with your host, because we're going to override all the cancellation policies. Well, that was great if you were a traveler, but when you weren't a traveler, when you were a host like me and Jerry and you know a bunch of our clients, um, we lost something like six hundred thousand dollars in bookings in a matter of thirty days through all of our homes because people were just canceling. And that really kind of scared us, to be honest with you. That kind of scared us because it said, boy, at any given time, some big tech, tech platform or something can happen and your business, boom, could just be gone. And most people all had their short-term rentals on two major platforms, Airbnb and VRBO. It's where probably 90% of everybody's bookings coming from. So that kind of made us think a little bit. We said, well, if that is the case, well, what happens if you get kicked off a platform? It could really be devastating. So my partner, Jerry, who is actually the CEO of Linkster, and Jerry and I have been best friends and uh, business you know, partners in lots of different ventures over the last 20 years. We're both from the East Coast. We've been out here since 2002, out in beautiful San Diego, California. And you know, he, he said, listen, let's, let's create a way where short-term vacation rental owners can direct book, meaning they can reach out to people directly, People can book directly and therefore they can build their business not being so reliant on uh, one booking site or another. And that started us in the whole tech play of building websites, doing direct booking, doing pricing, doing all of these things. Well, fast forward a couple of years and here we are in um, back back in, uh, I would say, the end of 2021. We were you know, going back. We keep adding all these great tech gadgets to all of our homes. And somebody introduced us to a thing called the Helium IoT box, this, this thing called the Internet of Things. And we're like, what is the Internet of Things? And we realized that it was this little box, this little device that's coming out that's creating a decentralized network for all those little thousands of little devices that are out in the world that need to be part of a network, but do not have access to Wi-Fi. So I said, well, what does that have to do with homes? And what it turns out is, is that this company, Helium, which is actually a cryptocurrency, decided that they were going to build this peer-to-peer -peer network, okay, a peer-to-peer -peer network of this new Internet of Things network out there. And by doing so, you would then start re getting rewarded in cryptocurrency in their coin, which is called HNT. So we said, okay, we looked into this and we said, wow, th this is pretty interesting. So what you're saying is, is that we can put a device on our home, on all of our properties. And then when this box networks with another box and they exchange data, then we're going to be rewarded. And we said, okay, well, could this be really lucrative? And it turns out it really is. 
And But we also noticed that there were some caveats in how this was all done. Um, the equipment wasn't really great. People didn't have great locations. They, the installation was subpar. So we kind of put our thinking cap on. And what we decided to do was we redesigned the box. We actually got a manufacturer. We hired some people that worked for like big companies like Motorola. We redesigned this whole thing. Basically, like what we did was we built a better mousetrap. And before you know it, we had a tech company called Linkster, which is a division of our Boomster company. Linkster, so links, like we're all linked, short-term rental. That was how Linkster really got started. So we became a tech company. And for the last six, seven months, we've been developing our product. And now we're in sales. And now the boxes are going out to homes all over the United States as they start to build out this thing called the Helium IoT Network. That's how it all got started. Okay. So to unpack some of that, what you're, you're, you're deploying these devices into the short-term rentals for other IoT devices. So they're kind of like, almost like a hotspot. Would that be a way to describe it? Absolutely. Like, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, have you ever been downtown and you, you parked at a parking meter and you had to put your credit card into the parking meter. Mm -hmm. That parking meter has to get the data somewhere for your credit card. That is a perfect example of what is called an IoT device, meaning it's a device that needs to be on an internet somewhere, but it's not gonna be on Wi-Fi and it's not gonna be on cellular and it's not gonna be on the, the satellite. So what a lot of the cities have done is they've created these local outdoor networks. I call them outdoor because they're mostly designed to be everywhere. And so that's like one example of an IoT device. Another one would be, have you ever went into a parking garage and it tells you how many parking spaces that are available in each, on each, um, each level? That's an IoT parking garage, meaning that there's a little tiny sensor that's on the spot. And when you drive over it, that data goes off into a network. So mm -hmm. that was built for cities. And now it's going out into the suburbs because... Right now, there are 80 billion new devices being developed, which are called IoT devices, that will help run your home. Everything from a coffee maker, washing machine, dryer, refrigerator, cameras, keyless entry, um, then things like temperature gauges, leak detection. They even have an IoT critter catcher, like you know, a mousetrap, but it's an IoT mousetrap. So imagine yeah. setting that, and all of a sudden it goes off you get a notification on your phone that you've caught something. So this is what is starting to happen um, in the residential markets out there is that all these devices are gonna be coming online and they're all gonna need a network. And, and this is the, the age of the smart home, but it's now happening at a, at a massive scale. So what, why would somebody use the Helium network versus just having a, a Wi-Fi network? Most. IoT devices that we're used to, let's say the Amazon Echoes and the like, we just use a Wi-Fi, just connected to your local Wi-Fi network. Why would we bother with the Helium? Yeah, it's a great question because a lot of the devices that um, are developed for IoT are the things that are never going to be hooked up to your Wi-Fi. They're mostly the things that are going to be detecting things that are kind of like wrongdoing in the house, like you have a leak somewhere. That's not a Wi-Fi device. That has to be hooked up to an IoT. So IoT is a much different signal than Wi-Fi. So all these new devices that are coming out, they're not going to work on a Wi-Fi signal anymore, simply because it's actually too expensive. Um, it's going to use all your data. And the IoT network is very, very inexpensive, but it goes a very long range. And the best part about it is you can put devices outside on your property that never would have access to, I mean, just think about it. If, if you have Wi-Fi and you go outside in your backyard, you don't have access anymore. You know, so imagine now having uh, a Wi-Fi network from uh, an IoT network from your neighbor, 10 houses down has an IoT box and is really beaming a, beaming a signal because the signal goes very far and it's just blanketing your neighborhood. And then there's another box. And before you know it, you have this overlying mesh network of, Everywhere in your neighborhood, there is an IoT network and devices could be activated there. So it's not so much for inside of your home. It's going to be for everything that is surrounding your house and everything outside. Okay. So th does this is this reliant then on 
other people in the community taking advantage of these IOT devices and these hotspots, if you will, is, is, or, or is there like a central hub somewhere that is connecting to a, a master network? Yeah. So this is the best part about it. We're now in web 3.0 and web 3.0 is all about owning the network. And so think about it. I, I think I always give this example I always give this example of imagine when if Netflix got started today, if Netflix got started today, they wouldn't be just saying, hey, go online and sign up. They'd want to build a worldwide network. And what they would do most likely is imagine this, is that you could go on, sign up and they would send you a box, almost like it looks like a little router box. And they would take the router box, you would plug it into your home. And then they would say, oh, great, thank you for helping build the Netflix network. And so this is what we're going to do. As your box is sending signals and receiving signals from other boxes in the area, we're going to pay you for that service. Now, that might not seem like such a big deal, but as people start ordering movies and TV shows and that data is going through your box to get someplace else, meaning like imagine like you own a piece of a, like a, a track and a railroad. Every time data goes across your part of the track, you're going to get compensated. That is exactly what the IoT network is right now. So you may not have, you may get an IoT, one of our helium hotspots for your property. You may have zero IoT devices. It doesn't matter. You're helping to complete the network. And right now there are 705,000 helium hotspots worldwide in 5,800 cities. So it's about a little over two years old, the network, and it's booming. And in the United States, there's about 200,000 hotspots. And then they say in the next two or three years, the entire United States is going to be complete and it's going to have anywhere from two to two and a half million hotspots throughout the United States. It's going to complete an entire ground network of data. And so we're about 10% into the, into the development of the network. So that's why right now when people hear about Helium and IoT, they come to us and they want to first see if their location is in a good spot because um, some cities like San Diego, we are completely inundated. If you look at the IoT network in San Diego, it's huge. So is Los Angeles, Orange County. Um, some of the cities are completely done. Other ones, they're just getting started. But in about three years, the entire United States will be covered in the helium IoT network. So, so we're early stage on. Sure. Okay. So, can you talk to like uh, before? Well, before we do, I want to remind everybody again: head over to Linkster.com/training to kind of get a better breakdown of what we're talking about here. But in a nutshell, John, could you kind of give us an example of how this might has have changed? how you personally manage uh, some of the short-term rentals? Yeah, so what So what we're doing, is, well, one of the things that we're doing with our short-term rentals is that we are adding an additional revenue stream onto our houses. So um, right now, the network is being developed, so it isn't done yet. So there isn't a whole lot that the network is going to do to improve the quality of taking care of your home. However... The nice thing about what's happening in the network right now is Helium, which is the cryptocurrency, they are rewarding us, people like me and you that put Helium hotspots at our homes. They're just rewarding us for having the hotspot there and the hotspot having the opportunity to network. It's, there's two things that it does. It beacons, meaning it sends a signal, and it witnesses a signal, meaning it's picking up a signal from another box. So right now, all it's doing is beaconing and witnessing. And it's rewarding people in their crypto tokens called HNT. So what does that really mean in a practical viewpoint in terms of property management? Well, we deal with a lot of property management companies that have hundreds and hundreds of homes. So they, what they'll do is they'll, get us, they'll give us a list of their homes. We'll analyze their properties to see which properties are good locations and which aren't. Because not every location is actually good. And once we go through our analysis, then what we'll do is we'll talk to them about deploying Helium hotspots to those select homes. And then this just becomes a revenue generating source for them that is really 100% completely passive. They don't have to service it. They don't have to monitor it. We do that all in-house here at Linkster. All they're going to be doing is every week, they're going to be rewarded. They're going to be receiving their rewards in crypto for just being part of the network. 
So this is the reason why there's like this big, big, big push for helium right now out in the US is because you can earn additional revenues just by adding this to your home. So it really just becomes a complete passive extra revenue source. And for property management companies, short-term vacation rental owners, anybody who actually lives in a home or has tenants or has a portfolio of real estate properties, this is a no-brainer to add a revenue source into what's what you already have. So that's what we're looking to do here with people. Well, you've brought up the revenue source a couple times here now. What yeah. would somebody expect, like if they deployed one of these boxes? Yeah, so let's short-term? let's look at that. So you know, I always preface this by saying some locations are really great and some locations are going to be okay. But I look at it this way: Let's say, for example, that you had a helium hotspot. We approve the location, we put it onto your home and it's hot on the network. And then let's say, for example, on a very, very moderate performing home, let's say it earns five tokens a month, meaning five tokens a month, it's put into your crypto wallet every single month. Well, right now Helium, I think is $15, $20 a token, which is not very expensive. But at the end of a year, you would have 60 tokens. At the end of five years, that would be 300 tokens. Now, if if it's if the tokens are $10, okay, that's $3,000. That's not so much. But what if Helium goes to $300 a token? Okay, now that's pretty good because that would be meaning that you would earn, if you cashed out your 300 tokens at the end of year five and it was $300 a token, that'd be $90,000. That's pretty good. That's a, a really good extra revenue source. Um, now, you, you could take that out 10 years. What if the token goes up to 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, just like Bitcoin? Who would have thought Bitcoin was going to be 40,000 uh, 40, in value for a single Bitcoin? Well, this is what's happening with IoT, with Helium, because This is the first time that a cryptocurrency is actually building a hard asset and the hard asset's going to be this network and they're just rewarding people in crypto. So this whole play right now is all about just collecting tokens. That's it. Just collect the tokens and then it'll go right into your wallet. And whenever you want to cash out, you can simply go through one of the exchanges and you can cash exchange it for other cryptocurrency or could exchange it for US dollars. So right now, this is a complete rewarding system right now more of a longer term play. So when helium really goes up in price, you're going to see people really cashing in when it goes for a run. Okay. Well, you know, uh, so you've probably have projected this out, right? I mean, you, mm-hmm. there's no doubt that you figured this out when it, or at least take, taking a look at it that you don't come across as somebody who's, who's betting on something like this. This has likely been a lot of research. Where are you predicting this cryptocurrency going? Because I mean, frankly, cryptocurrency has been a volatile to say the least. I, I see what you're doing because you have a kind of a groundswell because I, you're right. I haven't run into a lot of cryptocurrencies that have hardware devices and you're building a network with it. So there's something tangible behind this and some additional value as the foundation to this cryptocurrency. But I mean, Frankly, I mean, I could generate a cryptocurrency out of my house this afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, there's 8,000 cryptocurrencies. So it's growing all the time. I mean, what's going on in the world? And so, you know, what's nice is that Helium is ranked about 45th out of all the 8,000 cryptos out there. And uh, so, you know, listen, I, I can't be a great predictor in anything. I can only read what the professionals in the industry are saying. So, you know, publications like Wallet Investor, and Binance are saying, you know, Helium is is slotted to go to about two hundred and fifty dollars by twenty twenty seven. So five years from now, it's going to be in the the mid two hundreds, and I think it's may even go higher than that because they're looking to build it out the entire United States in the next two years. The network will be built, and then here's the kicker: this is what people don't realize what's going to happen after the network is built. After the network is built, there's going to be thousands of companies that are going to be paying Helium for data credits to watch their IoT devices. This is how it really all works. Um, so companies like right now, Salesforce.com uses the IoT network. Lime Motor Scooters um, uses those electric scooters that they use the IoT network from Helium. Um, you have Invisileach 
uh, which is an invisible like dog collar that you put on your dog. And it, if your dog gets out, you can literally track your dog outside, you know, just on the IOT network. So there's lots of data that's going to happen. And, and so the next phase of the whole data plan is the 80 billion new devices are going to be active on the network and people have to pay helium for that in order to watch their devices. And so the first part is just getting rewarded for being part of the network. And now the next thing is all the data that's going to come through. And that's when your box could really earn some income. Sure. Okay. So let's say somebody is interested in this. They apply for one of one of these devices or do they buy it or, or tell us that process. Yeah, there's actually two ways people can participate with us. Uh, the first way is they can become what's called a premier partner. A premier partner is somebody who is purchasing the equipment. Um, our boxes are about $3,000. They're $29.97 to get an individual box. And that earns you 50%, five zero, 50 percent of all the coins um, that come out of your box. And we will take care of shipping. We take care of installation, maintenance, everything. We do pretty much everything for you. You're pretty much hands off. You provide the location. We approve it. We ship it out. You get started. So, And, and there's no limit to how many hotspots a person can have, whether it's a single, a single or we've had people that have purchased hundreds because they're, they got properties all over the world. Um, so that's the first way you can become a premier partner. The second way is you can actually become a host partner. And these are usually typically for people who have lots of different locations. They may not want to purchase all the equipment, but they still want to earn the rewards. So it's a one-time fee of $495. You become a host partner with us. And then we will provide our own company-owned boxes, hotspots for your properties. But instead of earning 50%, you earn 15, so one five, 15% of the tokens. So that might not seem like a whole lot, but you don't really have any financial risk there either. And some of our property management companies, like I said, they've given us hundreds and hundreds of their locations to analyze. And out of maybe three or 400, we may get maybe 100 good locations. And guess what? They're earning 15% on 100 helium hotspots. That is a small fortune for just adding something to something that they already have. So that's why we have really two ways that people can get involved with us. They can either purchase equipment as a premier partner, or they can just provide their locations and become a host partner with us. Okay. Yeah. Real hands off. Sure. So when you say uh, you'll install it, you, you have, uh, I mean, it doesn't look like it's, it's too complicated to install, but what, what's entailed there? Well, great, great question. So, so Jack, one of the things that we found out when we were getting involved in this is that there were manufacturers out there that were just selling boxes where basically you take it out of the, the Amazon box that comes in, right? You go over to your, uh, your internet router, you plug it in, you stick the little thing on a coffee table next to a window in your house. This is what like the majority of people were doing. And all of a sudden, we're reading all the reviews going, hey, I'm not making any money this doesn't work and the whole thing. And then all of a sudden we said, no, it does work, but there are a few caveats. And this is how we developed Linkster is we actually created a proprietary design. We actually took the hotspot apart and we redesigned it and we came out with a, a hotspot that doesn't go in your property. It goes on the side of your house under the, under the eave of your roof. And it's in an, and it's, it's waterproof. It's, it's climate controlled, the whole thing. And then we actually put an external eight decibel antenna on the top of your property. It just looks like a stick. It's not this big, crazy looking like direct TV dish or anything. It's just basically a pole and that's it. And we have a special way that the antenna must be installed. The box has to be installed a certain way. And the only thing that powers this box, believe it or not, is the ethernet. So what I have to do is run an ethernet cable into your router box. And that's it. It costs about $5 a year to power your box. And that's it. So there is a specific way that we do installation and we have installers all over the world uh, that has that has the way that we have to install it. We'll send somebody. So if somebody wanted to become a premier partner or a host partner, we go through the whole process with them. We'll send the, we'll send the hotspot out to them with an entire installation kit. And then we will arrange for a professional antenna installer to come in and do the installation. So it's really 100% hands-free for somebody because there is a special way that we'd like it to be installed in order for it to work properly. Sure. 
So if they head over to your website, that that's where they could what did they provide the address you for your review? Yeah. So uh, the the address the web address that I gave you, which is the linkster.com forward slash training. Um, that's going to take you basically to our landing page, one of our landing pages. You can put your information in there um, and you can watch actually, a, you know, record a webinar that I did on, you know, the, the history of, you know, the helium crypto, the IoT network. You get to see numbers, you get to kind of see it all and, and you get to see visuals, you get to see all these things. And at the end of that, on the bottom of that page, there'll be a direct link to my calendar. Um, and that's the simplest way that people get started is that we'll have a conversation and then you can submit addresses. And then during that appointment with me or actually one of my representatives here, we'll actually go over uh, live with you. We'll, we'll look at all of your addresses. We'll put it into our software and we'll let you know what the earnings potential could be with one of your properties. And people say, well, you know, what if my property doesn't, you know, isn't good? You know, what if it doesn't qualify? Can I still participate? Well, you can uh, because everybody has probably at least a dozen people in their life, whether it could be their friends, their family, aunt, uncles, coworkers. It doesn't matter where you are in the United States, doesn't where you, matter where you are in the world. We can install a box on your behalf anywhere. And so everybody will have at least probably a dozen or so locations. And out of that, you're probably going to find three or four real good ones. And occasionally we find like a superstar location that makes a mint for somebody. And that, those are always fun to find out. Sure. Okay. Well, this has been an eye opener. This is something uh, new and you probably have experienced and I, I joke about it, but it, you know, real estate investors and realtors for that matter. And I don't think I'm saying anything that is uh, scandalous here, but we're a bit behind the uh, ball when it comes to technology and making le and leveraging it. So I'm sure have you found it a challenge to explain what this is to our crowd, if you will? Well, I will tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, full transparency, like the people who are in short term rentals are typically the easiest people we have dealt with so far in real estate. And there's a reason why, because they look at their properties as, you know, they're money makers. It's all about their house making money. So, so just adding a device to make even more money on the house that makes money for them. It's that's like a, just an easy concept. Property management companies, they have the most amount of, of, pro, of properties, but they're usually the most difficult to, to work with because their whole life is not about earning money from the properties. Their, their whole mindset is <laughs> putting out fires all day long. And I get it. Um, and so typically when we work with a property management company, there's, uh, there's typically they'll, they'll assign somebody who will be dedicated to work with us at Linkster to, to handle the the, each installation because there is a process, they have so many. And so that's why a lot of times when we deal with real estate investors or short-term vacation rental operators, so people that have you know three or four properties, they have control of the property, those usually go the, the quickest. And then the other thing that we're doing is we're also dealing with just business professionals that want to create a extra revenue source. And they're going, listen, I don't know anything about real estate. I just know a lot of people that live in a lot of homes Here's some, you know, just let me know if any of these work. If they're great, I'll get some boxes because I don't mind making some extra money. And what they'll do is they'll typically work their friends into the deal. Um, they'll share in the in the HNT, and we actually have software for that. So, so Jack, if you had, you know, a friend that lived in a great house, and maybe your house didn't work very well, but his house did or her house did, we can put a box there, and then you might be able to just split the HNT. You get twenty five percent. They get 25%. It's all done uh, with our software. So you don't even have to track anything and everybody's a winner. So mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the fun part about it is that you could be earning money from literally dozens and dozens and dozens of boxes out there that will all add up for you. Sure. Well, uh, before I let you go, uh, I'll send everybody again to linkster.com slash training. Head over to reimastermind.net to find that link because uh, I think that'll be the easiest way to get to that or go to your show notes in your podcasting app. But uh, before I let you go, John, is there a question or a concept you wished we would have covered here today? You know what? That's a that's a great question. Um, no, I think we you know I I think we've covered it. I I you know I I love being on real estate podcasts. Um, and you're right. You know, real estate hasn't been the high tech environment, right? Because we deal with homes, we deal with with those things. But I, it's really great to see a piece of technology that 
is truly the hands-off technology that can really help people earn additional money. Um, and I know when, when people are extrapolating this out into the next five, 10 years, you know, we know a lot of people, even in real estate, don't have a retirement savings a lot of times. Their kids are going to college in 10 years, things like this. So, you know, what I love about this is when the value, like, like people got involved in crypto for the volatility. And so I love this is because you don't have to buy any cryptocurrency, but you can get rewarded in the volatility of crypto at the right time. And boy, if you had five, 10 years right now, like we're doing here, you know, our goal of our company is to put 20,000 helium hotspots out in, in worldwide over the next three years. You know, that's a two, $300 million business um, with 20,000 out of the 2 million that's going to be here in the US. So I look at it this way. Whether it's with us at Linkster or someplace else, the IoT Helium Network is going to be a mainstream staple. It's going to be as, as everybody's going to know it as simple as cable vision. You know, it, it's going to be everywhere in every neighborhood. It's just going to be one of these things. And you're going to say, hey, I knew it when it only had 200,000 in the US. And now it's everywhere and all the locations are done. So that's why, you know, we're, what we always say here is we're kind of in a race against time. Um, to get this out, you know, to carve our little piece and, and to really give the ability for people like me and you to not only participate, but also to win. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate your time, John. I, I hope you'll consider coming back sometime. I think we could dive into a couple other topics, but um, again, head over to reimastermind.net for those links. Thanks very much.